Howdy, folks. We're doing some Conquest of Elysium 5. We're doing the Baron. And we're doing Monarchy on a large map. Large map is generally what I like to go with, because I think the higher you go, the more ridiculous it gets. Although that means you'll have an early, a better start when it comes to not starting next to other people. I just don't know if it's generally worth it in my, my mind space, but uh, we'll see ourselves here. Uh, we're playing with a bunch of Baron difficulty AI. I generally find them to be difficult, but not crazy, uh, especially in the early. I would probably go count, but uh, the early units they start with are kind of ridiculous in my mind. They uh, start with so much, if you start next to anyone, you're basically dead. Especially as factions like the Baron, who can't cheese as often. And that'll get us into it. Uh, the Baron starts in a big castle. He's got 25% gold and iron. He's got conscription that yields soldiers from ancient forests and other settlements like villages, towns, cities. Uh, we can also raise levies in those cities, which are crappy defenders. The really The new thing that comes to... Uh, Conquest of Elysium 5 at the get-go here is this receives free units from guard towers, which is great. Uh, great new addition. Makes the Baron a little better than it was before. Because it's a new thing for him. We'll actually go with this many AI with the extra pink guy at the bottom there. I don't want anyone matching our color, so we're gonna off-brand these guys a little bit. There we go. Well, you can actually... I want, a, I want a red. Every game is not completed without having a red color. We have uh, the auto save, com auto save command and the renaming commands on. So give us suggestions for names as we run through. Although this will be a little bit delayed uh, in release from when you comment. So keep in mind that I might not see your uh, comments for a while. We will be Lusamon Grey Warden. If you get the last part of the reference there. Uh, the Grey Warden part, good on you. We play similar games. Oh, goodness. Oh, Grey Warden. But we're going to be popping in here. We're going to talk about strategy and things like that throughout this, so don't worry. Uh, one note is that towards the end, we're going to be overviewing how we did, uh, the whole story of our campaign here, and also talk a little bit about strategy. So if only the strategy part interests you, you could always skip towards the end if you're watching this uh, in the in the far past, or in the far future, excuse me. Do we play Risky? Let's look what's around us. Ichthids. The scroll of Heavenly... Oh, so we could go to the Astral Plane, essentially. <laughs> okay. I don't know if we'll do that anytime soon. Or does that take you to the clouds? I'm unsure. Yggthrif? Yggthrif, your name sucks. I'm sorry. You will be our glorious son. You will be Hans Grey Warden. Our first son. We have many sons, although none of them have come of age. You'll see that throughout this as I name people after us, as I generally tend to like to think that these guys are the Baron's sons. This is frightening. We've already been ambushed. Nothing really to do about that besides fight it. And I guess with our other unit, we'll go here. And this will give us an opportunity to talk about the early units. Um, this is my risk it for the biscuit philosophy here. I, I think I mentioned it, but I have a philosophy in the game where essentially you're going to lose if one... You're going to lose this fort if one or two archers can't defend it. And here we're just going to play it a little riskier with only one. Oh, this is nothing. Okay. I was worried for a second. These guys will have trouble even piercing our armor. But, speaking of armor, here's our cavalrymen. They are decently HP'd with 10 HP. Good for a human unit. Or magic resistance. Let's blah. That's real bad. For such a good unit. Uh, otherwise. Two armor... Uh, we have a version of these guys that are knights that will get free spawn of. I won't recruit these guys, I'll be honest with you. You might see me recruit them like three or four times at most. They cost an incredible amount of iron, and you need iron for other things. My suggestion to you is unless the situation pertains to where you desperately need these guys for a particular fight, and that means you probably don't have knights and you have to start spamming out these guys, and that's generally not going to be affordable, then, you know... 
Unless that's the situation where you really need them, don't get them. They're not that good, and you get free spawn that are better. <laughs> so, and it costs you a shit ton of iron, so don't don't get those guys. Here is Hans Grey Warden, the High Lord. He has 13 HP, 5 magic resistance. Uh, I'll just really talk what he's good for. He's good at boosting your morale, as you can see here, with these two tags. Uh, with all these guys, they're all good at moving fast. He has a shield. So that's like four armor, basically. Four damage block. Uh, higher if it's arrows and things like that, which is nice. But what this guy specifically, this commander, is good for, that your other knights aren't necessarily as good for, although they can work with it, is that these guys have double attacks, and you can fully kit them as uh, except for boots. So you're going to want to put magic items on this guy. That's what he's good for. So boosting leadership and uh, also having magic items. You're generally going to end up having to do both because he sits towards the front and will die usually if you don't have magic items, especially as you get towards the latter part of the game where you're going through big fights. Um, unless you're clearly decisively winning. Longer fights, I guess, is the appropriate way to say uh, when you'll lose. You'll see here we'll ping these guys down pretty easily. Take a little bit of attrition there. I think we lost one spearman and took a bunch of wounds. Although, I don't think we took any permanent ones. Druid is already eliminated as they start with a terrible first base. Which is uh, now better because they added flowers to it, thankfully. But uh, We'll do our first raised levies here as we take this. And this is a good spawn. Um, so these are your levies, these are your slingers, I don't even want to, these are just garbage. Um, hit the button because it's free except for an action point, but don't expect these guys to defend against much. They might kill these three ichthids, and I say might with a big asterisk, because one of these guys has a shield and, <laughs> and these guys are just so bad. But absolutely spawn them, you're going to want to do that. This is a, actually a really nice guard tower that we can take now. They have archers though, don't they? No, do they? They only have a couple. Super winnable soon, but we're gonna trudge over here for a second. Start next to an iron mine, huh? Slam through these guys. Just our initial expansion is gonna focus usually on settlements. Oh great, we have dwarves next to us. Okay, we're gonna wanna go steamroll the dwarves as soon as possible. Otherwise, they're going to be running all over our turf. Although, we suffer less from that because of our levies. We'll give them attrition. Speaking of levies, we'll raise some levies right here. Although, these three sp levy spearmen will not do anything, really. Get some slow down here, but we're going to find a nice start. Even though the Ichthids have taken our coal mine, uh, we're having some nice things go on. And if you're like, you're not covering everything at first, don't worry. We'll cover things as we move along here, as is always we're apt to do. Demonologist has been slain by independence. That's thankful. We only have a couple tools to deal with the demonologist, and it requires us to get a temple, really, before they're any good. I don't want them starting next to the doors. Oh, are they across this? They're across this. That's a lot less of a problem. Why does they didn't go for this? That's actually really weak. We're gonna be able to take that early. But not yet. Not yet. We're not ready for it. We'd likely lose that fight. And we can't move now. One thing we will do this turn is upgrade our base defense. So now we're gonna have a little more guys there. We're gonna move this way. We have a pit down to a Gartha. And another guard tower. So these... This is a promising start because we're going to take these guard towers and they're going to give us free spawn. The hamlets give us free spawn. So we're looking at a, a decent-ish start. The port will also give us free spawn. I can't remember what the port gives us, but we'll talk about what everything gives us in a minute here. Oh, great. Bakmonos. Whew. That's, uh... These are some tough guys. This, in particular, causes us some problems with their mass numbers and spellcaster there. Level 2 spellcasters are scary, and we don't start with one, so... We're at a little bit of a disadvantage in that respect, so I'm going to take our cavalrymen back here. 
as hopefully we can thin out the dwarven. Oh, the dwarves are attacking. I don't know why they're doing this. I mean, we have... Thank God we're not at one archer, but they're going to get shot to death before they can clear the gate. Some suicidal AI. They probably thought... I, I think Illwinter might need to fix how... The AI calculates how sieges will go. <laughs> I don't know how it's doing it in 5 right now, but I've had that happen a couple times where AI just believe that they can beat uh, four longbowmen on a wall with melee troops, and I'm like, there's a big fucking iron gate right in front of you. Why, why do you believe this is going to work? <laughs> what, is, what could possibly lead you to this assumption? <laughs> All the odds of numbers should speak against this. This should go pretty smoothly. We'll lance these guys. Um, the only issue is we might get netted, but I think that's a strength check. No? What? What? Special effect nothing? Ill winter, what does this mean? What does that mean? Why does it say nothing? Let's see if the nets work. I've seen them work. Yeah. Yeah, strength check. What? That's weird. It should say entang it should say special effect entangled. Or whatever the the actual thing. Oh, that guy got fucking whacked. That hurts. That hurts real bad. Should probably stop cursing. Probably hurts YouTube analytics or whatever. I am who I am. Okay, cleared that out. We want to get more expansion going, though. Fortunately, we're going to have to deal with some problems early on. Hopefully the Bakamoto stay to their side of the river. We'll see how that goes. We'll leave two guys here. Start moving out in force. We could move to kill those goblins with this force, and then we'll start getting free spawn, which I think might be an admirable thing to do with both of our armies. Uh, considering, although it's going to be at least next turn, we'll move this guy over here and just try and get sight on things. These guys uh, will soak up these little bows that do barely anything, and I'm not afraid of any of the other units in there. They will either get shot to death by arrows, even though there's damage just for having walls, uh, sorry, parapets, or they'll, uh, I guess they're walls and parapets both equally there, but we'll have an easy time taking this, and it will give us free spawn. Continue. This is generally my strategy early on, is to recruit longbowmen. I like to do that. I think uh, unless you get a bunch of iron, you're probably going to want to prioritize them. Otherwise, you might prioritize some crossbows too. Or if you can get real lucky on iron production, like we might get here uh, tower guard, which are pretty great. But also, you know, we'll talk about tower guard. We got that scroll, we're not going to use it, and we're actually going to put it on a dummy unit so that we don't accidentally click it, because I've had that happen to me. Um, you may have seen in the Cobalt campaign, I sent a unit uh, on the maps, and he basically went off the map. He didn't go to the void, but if I moved him, I think he would fall into the void. Well, maybe I should have tried to move him. Wait, did I? Was that in our... That might have been in a single player I did just testing, I can't remember. I really earnestly can't. This should go smoothly. Might lose a unit if our archers don't do well. Oh, we have a shit ton of coal mines. I'm gonna leave that behind. Okay, just some forests over here. Hopefully we don't get trapped here by any other faction because we are light on troops. So in some respects, mines are good and bad for your faction. It's good because you have that increased production it's bad because you want more villages near you, and, you know, the more mine tiles there are, the less chance likely is that there's going to be uh, more towns, but uh, if you're so doubly blessed, having both is great. They have a red there. I don't know what faction that is. Hopefully not one that'll wipe us. Factions that tend to wipe you early are the barbarians. Uh, you want to stay away from the pale ones. That's definitely something I don't love to see. Although, I've, I haven't had that much trouble against the Pale Ones recently. They used to be super easy, now they're a little bit harder because you got to go find them in Agartha before you can really get to them. We're going to move over here. Uh, and we're going to flee because this guy's a big ball of death for us. 
because he gets smack right through our knights. But we've been annoying, and we've dropped down some uh, levees, so he'll get pelted. Maybe take a wound if we're really, really lucky, but I don't think it will. Oh, he's actually not going to attack that. That's good. Hopefully he's distracted with some other events going on. It's always good to ignore him. Let's move up this way. Ooh, a coastal hamlet. We're just taking all his stuff. And we could upgrade these, but we won't. Uh, they're crappy levies. We'll talk about the, how we upgrade them in a little bit. A little bit here. We actually have plenty of resources, so we will build some Tower Guard. Tower Guard are pretty great. They have seven hit points, so that's pretty high. They have one armor, and they have a shield. So they're going to sit in the back and fire their crossbows, but also, uh, better than any other archer, they're not going to get shot to death. Um, you don't want them sitting in your far, far back lines. You do want to fight with them, though. Uh, don't get me mistaken. They just, you know, you don't want them in a big, big army, because then they'll not take hits ever, and they'll just be wasted. They'll base, you might as well build a crossbowman or a longbowman if you don't think they're going to get shot. So that is, that's what you want them for, is they're archers that are really good at getting shot at. Also, if you get in a pinch, they also have a broadsword, so they, you know, they increase your odds if, uh, God forbid, you lose your front line, which you don't want to lose your front line, but it's going to happen sometimes. Stab this giant mantis. Might as well. He's right next to us. And just crush him with lances. You'll see versus only like one unit, lances will hurt. Oh, we have another baron near us. And of course, he starts with more cavalrymen, so we don't want to take that engagement. So I think I'm going to run my cavalrymen up north. I'm going to have to wait for our uh, big, big guns coming out before we can really take them on. And that means we're going to have to outpace them in things like expansion, but it's like there's nothing up here besides a very murderous banshee, which will kill the shit out of us if we touch that. Hopefully no one gets too close, like that big guy could take this very easily. The big pale one guy. We have 12 to 33. We have low walls is why I'm doing this, and I'm hoping they'll catch most of these guys with archers, and if they catch the back line, they also have to contend with tower guard start to shoot them. They'll start to take damage. This side's a little light, unfortunately, but uh, we're winning. And we can place some levees here, and we'll have our first port, which is always nice to have an early port. Give us a bunch of gold, and the option to trade for iron or sell it in this case, because we have a decent abundance. Although we might want to save it up for siege equipment, because this faction does very well with siege equipment. Being attacked by more dwarves, but uh, we can go retake this and murder those dwarves pretty soon. It looks like they might actually be up there in that corner past that river that has to freeze over for them to get over, which is nice, because then we don't have the same issue we usually have with dwarves. And unlike most factions, this faction excels at taking out dwarves. Dwarves can be a little bit tricky. How uh, ballisted out their base can be from time to time. We'll build some crossbowmen up in here. Try and protect ourselves. Uh, it's nothing good. Uh, I think we're going to run these guys up there anyway and upgrade. Maybe we'll look down into Agartha. Although we could run straight into some really dangerous units. Hopefully that was that Baron down here. That would be nice if he's gone early. Looks like they've left most of our settlements alone down there besides the one the knight took. This farm and this hasn't been taken. I do want to peek into Agartha, but that'll have to be next turn. I hate this, this weird, like, it looks like we can step here, but no. don't like that. We're going to go take this iron mine, I think. Or we might kill those dwarves. Uh, no, that looks... Uh, is that an illusionist? Is either an illusionist or a monk. They have similar models. as we wait for the turn to end. We can't see it. It's fine. Oh, we found the pale ones. Those rocks will crush the shit out of us, though. We can't... Oh, I guess this is a dead end. Well, we're gonna want to come kill these guys. Thankfully, we found them. Actually, it's nice to see them. Might want to send this army up to do that dirty work. 
And that's just to prevent uh, that king from doing any shenanigans to us. We're gonna lose a couple units here to the crossbow fire. One unit, one longbowman? I think it was a longbowman. You might be saying, you'd know if you turn on battle reports, but I can't do this click-through rate if I turn on battle reports. I have to individually click them. And I generally like to watch most of the battles to at least get a glimpse of what happened. And I know if I turn on battle reports, I'd just be skipping a bunch of stuff that was, like, semi-important. This is a monk. It's kind of unfortunate. We want to get out of this range, because he will convert these guys if he has conversion. God, these hills. And the snow. Terrible snow. Get some more tower guard. Might pick them up before we go up and take on Agartha. But we do want to do that, although we're going to be in a bit of a pinch situation there, and we're going to get hit with that rock. We can siege. We could also take that guard tower over there. No free spawn over here yet, unfortunately. Not getting lucky. Let's raise some levees. Get a little tough to take this stuff. Starting in the snow is always a pain in the butt. Because you're always a little slower. The dwarves are starting to get irritating with the amount of just single guys they can send out. As a note, as the dwarven faction, if you ever want to expand quickly, just, just do it. Just do what they do. Be absolutely toxic with your expansion and just keep sending guys out till it works. These guys... I'm gonna go up here, actually, after we raise some levees. Just make sure that's the end. As they take our stuff. I think I want to focus on the Pale Ones in killing that squad up there. I'm hoping we see Summer soon. We slow roll our way through this. Yeah, it's not Summer. Oh, this is going to be so many movement points. Really hate to do it. I really hate to come all the way up there to kill the Agarthans, but uh, I want to clear them out. I'm going to be missing out on resources. We need to save our money for another commander so that when we get free spawn, he can move. And retake whatever the dwarves take. Could be a high lord. Could also be a wizard or a monk if we get a lucky roll while we have the money. Captain works just as well. Do that. And he's going to move out when we get free spawn in the interim... I'll let him collect resources. Oh, that's actually pretty... Might take on the Agarthans first and see where we stand. See them bumping around down there, so we know their caster's not down there, which is nice. Hopefully they haven't been able to recruit another rock thrower, otherwise we'll take a lot of casualties. And that cave does protect them from a lot of advanced forcing. Okay, looks like they turned around. Just want to get rid of an early threat here, which is the plan. With Lusamon. You know what we haven't done? We haven't renamed anything yet. We have the renaming function on. Don't forget to suggest... Oh, God, I want a monk. I do want that. These are monks. Uh, they have a blessing, so if L starts getting powerful, he'll get blessed too, but don't count on that. Um... You have 5 magic, resistance 5 hit points. You have prayers level 1 with resist magic and conversion. Something new is that you get benediction, which means you can uh, found... Uh, you can essentially be an abbot. But you have to cast this in a temple. I don't know what this looks like this. I don't know what this looks like yet. Hopefully it means you can do blessings and things. I have no idea. I just don't know. I'm interested though. Okay, this is good. We're going to be able to kill the Agarthans and then maybe grab some stuff down here, and this will probably never be taken if we grab it. Oh, we have units in here. Did we leave knights? I guess we just... They spawned again. We didn't see the message. Oh, it was right now. Yeah. Okay, so we'd like conscription this year. Not great, but... Uh, we could run this monk around with them. I think we will do that. We'll go take this iron mine with these guys. They should be apt to do it. It's not that many men. Oh, we could maybe kill those dwarves before they found a colony, depending on how many there are. 
Although they could have a bunch of dwarves. Yeah, that's a lot of outdoor dwarves. Hopefully they, they don't have a counselor, so they can't found a colony, but we're gonna go back and uh, rethink our priorities. See, we got free spawn here. These are the kind of free spawn you'll get. Uh, Archer, as you can see, has less damage and less range than a longbowman. It's a base unit of the game, usually. Halberdier, uh, something you can recruit as well, has one armor, six hit points. The real, the real reason you get these guys instead of a spearman um, is, you know, if you don't want a shield and you want armor, which is worse versus arrows. So these guys are worse versus arrows. But if you're looking at heavy melee, so say you were fighting, uh, like a bunch of dwarves in melee, or you were fighting, uh, pale ones, which don't have a lot of range, you could use a halberd and it would probably be better. Also getting through high armor, because that one to eight damage is pretty decent. Oh, they got another rock thrower. I think this will go fine. We'll take some attrition from the rock throwers. But uh, if I remember correctly, yeah, they're not too crazy. Hopefully they'll miss some. And that will probably take care of the Agarthans as we get plunked. And take some attrition. Hopefully spearmen is what I'm looking at. As we continue to get hit with rocks as we come in here. It's gonna be tight, but our arrows will start to shoot causing them damage. It'll be hard to pump through these guys as they do a, a big fist attack with plus nine to a one a one D one. And they're gonna throw boulders at us as we try and enter. I'm gonna speed this up. The gate's really doing trouble. Once we get through the gate, things will start to go. Oh, we are gonna lose our High Lord. I don't think he's gonna survive this. Yeah, he died. Slow it down that we got through the gate. Festering wound, festering wound. That's not gonna help too much. Sucks we lost the High Lord, but uh, we can always recruit another one. Then we'll rename that other one to be our first son. The Baron dies, though. That will be a big problem, but he's got really good stats, so not likely to die. And we've done it, and the Pale One is dead. Very fortunate to kill him early. Oh god, a voice of L has eliminated a Baron. That's scary. L does very well versus us because they have a lot of conversion. I don't like having another faction of L in the game when we're playing a Baron. It's very scary to think about. And well, we've taken this. There's really nothing. Okay. That's somewhat boring. Can't recruit anything here, so might as well leave it alone. So we make action movement issues, but we do get one gold, so very slim rewards, but uh, rewards all the same. Worried about the dwarves attacking this and we lose some free spawn that we would have had. The Bakmono have killed the dwarves. I love that because the Bakmono building their mine holds is not going to happen anytime soon because they're going to need a bunch of sacrifices. And uh, they don't even get walls, I don't think. So that is uh, a preferable faction to be dealing with. This is a little bit of a slow sp start on our free spawn. Enter back through the gateway. We have 28 to 15. Some of our guys are wounded. Two, three, and I have like a couple archers. The archers are what I'm worried about. But we have tower guard. And the walls are low, and I want the free spawn here to start collecting. We're not probably going to come back up here for a while. It's going okay so far. Hoping to do more archers as they... Yep, there we go. We're going to start coming in. Take a couple losses, but... Uh, it'll be nice to have this watch tower. And there's not a lot of roaming stuff here, it doesn't look like. Hopefully we don't even have to recruit that much to defend it, and it'll give us free spawn. Speed this up a little bit. Clunk through. That's our saint. We didn't find that, really. Um, that was on one of our spearmen that died. Rest his soul. Rest in peace, Mr. Spearman. 
we're going to transfer that scroll to another unit, maybe an archer this time, so it doesn't fall off. Yeah. There you go. We're going to run down here, and uh, that was a little bit of inconvenient moving, but uh, we're going to come combine some forces and move out in force trying to take some of this stuff. We're going to try and go south and find some villages. This is a very inconvenient start up here for the most part. There's some good stuff like the ports and the mines are nice, but we're not getting enough free spawn yet. We really need to start taking off. Otherwise, we might get in trouble. Oh, the Dwarf Queen got killed by the Bakmono. Which means the Bakmono are likely doing pretty hot over there. Which is an interesting faction to fight against for us. We're going to have some trouble because they have a lot of magic that they can do to us that'll hurt. I'm just stuck up here. Build the scout for our baron so that we know what we're up against. Got to check that Bakmono army here and see what they're throwing at us. My cat is snoring. I don't know if you can hear her. Well, OBS froze. Hopefully it unfreezes. I've been, it keeps recording when it freezes, though, so... I don't know what to make of that. Oh, she sneezed. Cute. This is a very crappy army. We could move in force against them, we could take them. Which might be likely. It's going to probably happen here. I'm a little worried about OBS. I'm just going to stop the recording on this turn and restart it so that we make sure it's recording.